Lake Baikal stretches deep into the wilds of Siberia. It is the oldest and deepest freshwater lake in the world. And it is full of ancient mysteries. Great nature goes deep beneath the ice to unravel Lake Baikal's secrets. They discover rare creatures barely altered over millions of years. See how life here changes as a great thaw arrives. And reveal nature at its most raw and breathtakingly beautiful. Lake Baikal, the oldest and deepest freshwater lake in the world, stretches deep into Siberia and is full of secrets great nature hopes to unravel. The team arrives in April as a long, hard winter is drawing to a close. Igor Rihanev works at the Russian Academy of Sciences and has studied the lake for more than 30 years. He will be their guide to this extraordinary place. The first stop is one of Igori's favorite places. Few views of Lake Baikal can match this. Savage winter weather has created a sweeping panorama of ice. Even at the end of April, the temperature falls below freezing. It's hard to believe that soon this view will change beyond recognition. Now it's time for a much closer look at this spectacular frozen world. As they walk out onto the lake, Igori carefully checks the path ahead. Some ice near the shore has started to thaw and he's looking for weak spots. One, two, three. With relatively little force, it shatters into splinters called candle ice. As the temperature rises, ice crystals that have been bonded together all winter start to separate. They can still withstand human weight.
but if struck right, they break easily. Candle ice isn't uncommon, but shards this size are only found in extremely cold places. For local people, candle ice is a welcome sign that spring is approaching. Leaving the thawing ice behind, they return to land. In midwinter, the scene is very different. This is Lake Baikal, just a few months ago. The temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius. The ice doesn't give an inch, even under the weight of a two-ton four-wheel drive. The lake surface is crystal smooth. And the views through it are incredible. Although the ice is over a metre thick, it's almost perfectly transparent. The bottom of the lake is clearly visible. It's like standing on a huge sheet of glass. Lake Baikal starts to freeze at the end of December. Ice first forms in the north and spreads south. In just over a month, the whole lake is frozen. At the end of April, the thaw begins. By June, all traces of the ice have vanished. During the April thaw, the melting ice creates a spectacular but short-lived phenomenon they want to see. To do so means going out onto the ice and deep beneath it. Before they set off, Igori pours them each a glass of vodka. But it's not to drink, it's to sprinkle on the ice. It's an age-old ritual to pay respect to a lake that sometimes claims human lives. The best way to the dive point is by hovercraft. Out on the lake, the vast expanse of ice is even more overwhelming. It's a world of stark beauty, forged by nature at its most raw. A break in the journey is a chance to meet one of the many creatures for whom the lake is home. A Baikal seal pup, the only species of seal that spends its whole life in fresh water.
Back on the move, they notice something strange along the shore. Huge chunks of ice hang like drapes from the rocks overhanging the lake. During winter, cold gusts of wind blow water from the lake onto the shore and it freezes, creating these incredible patterns. Why there's a gap between the ice and the surface of the lake is a mystery. Little else escapes the ice's frozen grip. Finally, they arrive at the dive point, and Igori goes to work. First, he has to open up a hole in the ice, and that's not an easy job. It's around 60 centimeters thick. Alexander Kupczynski has joined them. He's been Igori's dive partner for a long time. It's vital they have a lifeline a route back to the surface if they encounter any problems underwater. The hole is finally ready. And it's a gateway to another world. As the ice starts to thin, Sunlight warms the water, and phytoplankton start to breed, turning the lake an emerald green. Bubbles dance across the ice as they look up at the world above. Igori has found what he's looking for, a large crack in the ice, around 80 centimeters wide, that he wants them to follow. The crack is created by a combination of strong winds and rising temperatures. And it's soon clear why Igori wants them to see it. As the crack widens, a vast corridor of ice opens up. It's a brief moment in the lake's life they are lucky to see. Between the savage bite of winter and the rising warmth of spring is a moment of stunning beauty.
Lake Baikal was born 25 million years ago. It was created due to the movement of three of the Earth's tectonic plates. The Eurasian, Amur, and Indian plates. This is how the Earth looked 90 million years ago. India was far further south than it is today. As India moved north, the Himalayas were born as the great land masses of the world changed shape during a time of incredible tectonic movement. Geographical upheaval moved the Eurasian continent from the south and caused a gigantic crack to open up between the Eurasian and Amur plates. Water poured into the crack and Lake Baikal was born. The lake covers 31,500 square kilometers. It's about 600 kilometers long, and at its widest, it's 80 kilometers across. And its seasonal changes are dramatic. It's June. Summer's arrived, and Lake Baikal now shows a very different face. Water that was frozen solid at the end of April now gently ripples. And the changing conditions attract many visitors. Listvianka is a town near the southern tip of the lake. It's a popular tourist destination as people flock to enjoy the beauty of Lake Baikal. Temperatures climb to a balmy 22 degrees Celsius. But as one of the team finds out, most people don't come here to swim. <laughs> the water in the lake is ice cold all year. Even in summer, it's a chilly 10 degrees Celsius. Despite the rise in air temperature, the water doesn't warm up. But dramatic changes are taking place. Igori prepares to go underwater again. This is the best time of year to explore a unique ecological system that's been established over millions of years and hopefully see some of the rare and bizarre creatures that live in the lake. Even in summer, a dry suit that's totally waterproof and warmer than a wetsuit is vital. Insulated against the bitter cold, they can take their time and explore the lake for any signs of life. An inquisitive face watches the new arrivals. 
It's a stone sculpin, a type of fish only found in this region. A Baikal sculpin, meanwhile, is only found in the lake itself. 70% of all the creatures found in Lake Baikal are endemic. More than 1,000 different species. The lake provides a unique environment for wildlife. Fish here have evolved over 25 million years. It's little wonder that they range from the beautiful to the bizarre. Like a strange and spiky Gammaridian amphipod. It's a shrimp-like creature, one of around 300 different crustaceans found in Lake Baikal. The Gammaridian amphipod is about four centimeters long, far bigger than species found in other lakes, and its hard shell and spines are designed to protect it from enemies. Another amphipod with a soft shell has a special technique of hiding in the sand. Local people call these strange-looking stalks gupka. They're Baikal sponges, a type of primitive multicellular animal also found in the ocean. It's rare to see sponges this big in fresh water. Some live for more than 100 years. The sun doesn't start to set until 11 o'clock in the summer. And when night falls, more creatures come out of hiding. Like the Baikal black grayling, a type of salmon. And the Baikal yellowfin, another fish unique to the lake. Many creatures feed after dark. Baikal black grayling hunt plankton. Other fish come to hunt the graylings. This is a type of scorpion fish only found in the lake. It uses its huge mouth to suck in and swallow prey. There are about 50 different species of fish in Lake Baikal. About half are endemic. The world's oldest and deepest lake is home to creatures found nowhere else on Earth. After a close-up look at the lake, now they want to get a bigger picture. The best way of doing that is from the air. This is just one of the 366 rivers and streams that pour into Lake Baikal.
mountains, some up to 2,000 meters tall, surround the lake. So do dense conifer forests. At first sight, Lake Baikal looks like an ocean. Near the shore, the waters are rich emerald green. Further out, the water is a dark blue, a sign that it's very deep. The volume of water in the lake is about 23,000 cubic kilometers. That's around a fifth of the planet's fresh water, the equivalent of 3,000 years of drinking water for the entire population on Earth. Steep cliffs frame the lake. They're a sign of the incredible tectonic forces that forged the lake and that continue to shake the land today. Thousands of earthquakes and tremors are recorded here each year and the lake expands by a few centimetres every 12 months. Tectonic movement has caused another record-breaking phenomenon. Lake Baikal drops down to 1,630 metres and is the world's deepest freshwater lake. A lake created by tectonic activity is called a fault lake, and its main feature is its depth. There are two more giant fault lakes, both in Africa, Lake Tanganyika and Lake Malawi. At 1,470 meters and 706 meters, they are the world's second and third deepest lakes and were created during the geographical upheaval that formed the Great Rift Valley. Tectonic movement causes deep cracks or faults in the ground. Lake Baikal originated with an incredibly deep fault, up to 9,000 meters in places. Water flooded the fault and the lake was born. Because of the sand, soil and animal carcasses that piled into the lake over millions of years, its depth is now around 1,600 meters, but it is still the deepest in the world. And its great depth creates another remarkable phenomenon that Igori now hopes to show them. Nikolai Granin is also a scientist at the Russian Academy of Sciences. He says that a strange sight on the surface of the lake is a sign of something dramatic happening on the lake bed. But to find what they're looking for on the surface of the lake isn't easy, even for experts. 
they have no idea when or where it will occur. Luck will play a big part. The hours pass slowly by. Suddenly, Igori sees what they're looking for, and it needed his sharp eye to spot it. A small section of the surface is alive with bubbles. It's a methane eruption caused by methane gas escaping from below. Everyone's keen to see exactly what's happening underwater. The deeper they dive, the more the bubbles increase. Finally, at around 35 meters down, they can see where the methane is leaking. The crowds of fish and crustaceans are a big clue. Methane attracts bacteria other creatures prey on. Gas constantly streams out of the lake bed, clouding the water with bubbles. And according to Nikolai, the origin of the methane is far underground. In 2008, the Russian submarine Mir was used to research the deepest part of the lake. This was the first time the depths of Lake Baikal had ever been seen. Among their discoveries were many more endemic species. They also collected some unusual matter from the lake bed. looks like a lump of ice is actually methane hydrate. It's formed when methane gas from animal carcasses and water combine and solidify. Methane hydrate requires high pressure and low temperature to form. The great depth and severe cold of Lake Baikal are ideal. The hydrate turns into methane gas, which rises through cracks in the bedrock and pours into shallower water. It's very rare to see a methane gas eruption on such a large scale. Another phenomenon unique to the world's oldest, deepest lake. Next morning, a veil of fog descends. It's a common sight in spring, when the water temperature stays low, whilst the air temperature rises. As the sun rises, the fog lifts. Most days are sunny, 
and there is little rain. Eighty percent of the lake's water comes from rivers. And as the skies clear, Lake Baikal is revealed in all its summer glory. Animals gather to enjoy fresh water. The lake enriches life far beyond its shores. Lake Baikal once had the clearest water in the world and visibility still reaches over 40 meters in places. Igori is keen to show the team one place in the lake where the water is especially clear. They're going to make the long trip to Olihone Island. Olihone Island is in the middle of Lake Baikal. There are no roads around the lake. The first stage of their journey means going inland. They will travel by road for about 300 kilometers and then by boat to the eastern side of Olihone Island. Seven hours later, they arrive in Sahirata, the place they'll catch the boat from. Sahirata has a population of around 90, mainly fishermen and farmers. It's one of many small villages sitting on the shore of the lake. And for Igori, it's a chance to catch up with an old friend. Pavel Spiridonov is a fisherman, and he has agreed to take the team to Olihone Island. But their trip will have to wait until tomorrow. At 11 o'clock, the sun sets and that's the time Baikal fishermen start work. People here live by nature's clock. Nine o'clock next morning, the trip to Olihone begins. The island is about 60 kilometers away and they won't be getting there quickly. Pavel's boat is 40 years old and its top speed is 12 kilometers an hour. and the captain seems to be in no hurry. All the team can do is wait patiently.
Five hours after leaving land, they can finally see their destination. The lake shimmers as they slowly approach the east of Olihone Island. During summer, the water here has the highest degree of visibility in the whole lake. The lake bed can be clearly seen from the boat. Now the team wants to find out why the water is so clear. The degree of visibility is at least 30 meters, and the clarity is stunning. One reason the water is so clear is that only a small amount of nutrients enter the lake. Those that do are mainly from sewage, from the small number of farms and villages nearby. Low levels of nutrients make it harder for phytoplankton that would otherwise cloud the lake to breed. But there is also a remarkable cleaning system at work in the lake itself. On the right is how the water looked at the end of April. In just over a month, it is crystal clear. To find out why means turning back the clock. Winter ice starts to melt at the end of April. The thaw starts on the shore and works its way towards the centre of the lake. As sunlight warms the water, the temperature rises and phytoplankton breed. When the water gets to four degrees Celsius, it is at its densest and heaviest, and it sinks. Phytoplankton sink too, and in return, clear water at the bottom of the lake rises. This recycling of water continues for over a month until the ice melts completely. As summer arrives, the water becomes even clearer. And some of the lake's endemic species have an important part to play. Biologist Olga Makova is a colleague of Igori's. She studies how creatures in the lake have evolved and their role in a remarkable ecosystem. With Olga's help, they hope to have a closer look at the life forms that contribute to cleaning the water. One of the most important are geodia, the primitive multicellular animals that cling to the rocks, known to local people as gupka.
are samples taken so they can have a closer look at the way geodia function. As Olga cuts it open, it's immediately clear that geodia is a type of sponge. Local people once used them as just that, sponges. Geodia works like a filter. Its surface is covered in holes through which it sucks in water. It absorbs phytoplankton and organic matter, breaks it down and then releases fresh, clean water. Geodia are found in other lakes but the ones in Lake Baikal are the biggest of all, both in size and number. The largest are about half a metre long. Just one geodia, around 40 centimetres big, can clean a few thousand litres of water every day. Other endemic species play their part in cleaning the water too. Gamadia eat plankton that sit on the lake bed. And water fleas break down bacteria and algae. Lake Baikal is naturally low on nutrients, so creatures have evolved special abilities to absorb what few nutrients there are. Clean water helps creatures evolve. The creatures in return help clean the water. Great nature has seen how an ever-changing and remarkable cycle of life exists in Lake Baikal. The world's oldest and deepest lake continues to reveal more timeless secrets. <laughs> <laughs>